to D.C. now. A protest for peace descended into violence last night outside the DNC headquarters in Washington with police using pepper spray on demonstrators. Yeah, organizers say they were there to demand a ceasefire in the war between Israel and Hamas. Pro-Palestinian protesters blocked the entrance of the Democratic National Committee as officers tried pulling them away from the door. The top three Democratic leaders in the House were all inside at the time, including a list of others, one of which is Representative Debbie Dingell, who talked with our Rochelle Graham just a short time ago. So you were at the Democratic National Headquarters last night when those protests started and then turned violent. Can you tell us what happened from your perspective as someone in that building? Well, I was attending reception uh, with my Democratic colleagues, the leadership for a number of Democratic candidates who are running for the House next year. And I heard a familiar chant. I live in Michigan, and uh, I know many people that have strong concerns about this and realized that there was a protest outside, uh, which didn't bother me because I do believe in the right to protest. But uh, as time went on, I needed to leave, and the police had locked down the building, and I said, I'll be safe, and I tried to go out a side door uh, of the building, and one, it had been blocked by trash bins, and two, uh, the police told me that there were people waiting in the alley to jump on us. So I went back in and then said to everybody, look, I'm gonna go out the front door. Uh, two other people were going to go with me. I said, we'll be the test case. What are they going to do to me? Um, I, I frequently, as you know, when I'm home and people are protesting, I go out and talk to the protesters about what the issues are. But the police said to me, they are spraying pepper spray on us. And as he said that, a uh, Capitol Police young woman uh, came in and had been burned and her eyes were badly singed and a medic came in right behind her. So I went, well, guess I'm not going out the front door. So it was a, a rattling experience. The, I want to thank the law enforcement that kept us safe. Uh, we were able to get another exit plan, and eventually I left the building. I want to say something. I think it's very important that we protect the fundamental rights of our Constitution. Freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of assembly, due process. and. There are a lot of intense feelings out there right now. We need to protect peaceful protests. And when things turn the way that they did last night, I th it, it is concerning and somebody's gonna get hurt. I know you just thanked Capitol Police there. Do you think those officers who were doing their jobs, is there anything more that could have been done to protect the lawmakers, including yourself in Washington or even here at home? You know, anybody who knows me knows that I'm someone that does not like entourages. I want to be accessible. I'm out and about by myself. I think that we all need to take a deep breath and think about what's happening in our society and how much easier it's become to spew hate, to try to divide us, to disagree disagreeably. When we can have different opinions, we can listen to each other, we can learn, and we can disagree agreeably. Uh, I think last night, nobody anticipated this, what happened last night. My understanding is police had had no indications. While I was trying to get out the side door, people seemed to be coming from all directions like someone had put out a call. And as I say to you, I believe in the right for free speech and free protest. But if you saw pictures of it, people really were, they began, what I saw, and I think this rattled me more than January 6th because I was closer to it. I was right on the other side of the door. People were pushing up uh, against people. They were trying to get inside. And if they want to talk, ask to talk, but don't be aggressive uh, in the way that you saw. And I thank people who keep us safe every single day. Can't keep everybody safe. I think it's incumbent upon all of us to try to find a way to talk to each other and treat every person with dignity and respect. You told the Detroit News, you know, after things left a peaceful protest and escalated, that you were more scared last night than you were on January 6th. Do you still feel that way? Yes, I do, because of this reason. I think on January 6th, I had no access to a television. So 
Well, I heard the crowds, the Capitol Police were outstanding in keeping us safe that day, getting us out of where we were, taking us to a place where we were safe. And I never felt close to the crowds or seeing the anger. Last night, I saw the anger. There wasn't much separation. The space that we were in was not a large space. There were only about 50, 50 of us probably total, uh, maybe a little more, I don't know. And the crowd outside was larger and angry. And I know people are angry. I'm listening. I hear their fears, their scares. They think people don't care about them. They do. We're hearing what they are saying. And we're talking to the White House, into the State Department, and making it clear that innocent babies shouldn't be dying on either side. But when you start pushing and get aggressive, those are the kinds of things that can quickly get out of control. And so I urge everybody, I'm not saying don't protest. Have peaceful protests. Be aware that even someone you care about could get hurt. And sometimes what happens at the event takes over and the message you're trying to get delivered doesn't get heard. Right, because this now is the big story today. Before we run out of time, I do want to ask you, many of the protesters last night claimed they are part of the majority within the Democratic Party calling for an immediate ceasefire. How much do you think about this and the impact on the primaries, perhaps the general election? You know, right now, I want peace in the Mideast. I don't want to see anybody else die. I don't, I'm not focused on what's going to happen in next year's election. I'm focused on stopping the violence in the Mideast. I don't want to see anybody else die. So I'm focused right now on how we bring peace to this area, how we prevent uh, any of these, more of this horrificness that we're seeing happen. And then we'll focus on uh, the elections next year. This right now is how do we de-escalate the situation in the Mideast? I think a lot of people would have respect for that answer. Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, thank you so much for being on with us. We appreciate your time.